is okay. So um, welcome everyone, and uh, thank you for giving up your time to be with us tonight. Uh, this is the second webinar to explain and review the proposals for the future of Huguenot House. We wanted to make it easy as possible for people to safely engage with us. So there are lots of different ways people can engage, including online, phone and post, as well as today's webinar. Just some housekeeping before we begin. Uh, the session is being recorded and we will put the recording on our website for people to watch later. Today, we'll be presenting the options for Huguenot House for about 30 minutes, and then we'll stop to give you the opportunity to ask your questions for around 15 minutes, and we'll try to keep to time. Now, the project team will answer these questions at the end. And in addition to our panelists uh, that I'll introduce in a minute, uh, some of our wider team are also here and can jump in to help answer any more technical questions later. Feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar using the question and answer function at the bottom of your screen. These questions can be kept anonymous and other participants will not be able to see them. We'll try to answer as many as we can during the Q&A. Um, if we can't answer all the questions in the time, we'll review all the questions after the session and we'll put regularly updated question and answers on the website. If you want to ask questions about your personal circumstances, we would be pleased to have a one-to-one -one session with you. Please call or email us to arrange this. If we head to the next slide, I'll introduce you to the team that you will meet over the course of the presentation. So this is the team. My name is Kevin Day and I'm Head of Operations um, in Corporate Property. And uh, uh, Claire Nangle um, is a uh, Senior Client, Corporate Property. Uh, Darren Essex. Um, Darren is the Senior Development Manager at uh, Westminster City Council. Yeah. And then Hi there, Darren. Uh, and then Miles uh, Lee is the lead architect. Um, hi there, Miles. Hi. So that's that's the panelists, um, and they will all be presenting some of the slides uh, in today's presentation. So now I'll hand over to Claire, um, who will give you some background on our consultation. Thanks, Claire. Hello everybody, uh, my name's Claire Angle and I'm the senior client from the corporate property team. I'd just like to say thank you very much for joining us this evening. Huguenot House is managed by the corporate property team and it is one of the investment properties that we own and manage. Corporate property is therefore responsible for the building and implementing the decisions that the council makes about it. The council has been discussing, as you can see from this timeline, on various options for the building for, for some time. And the latest consultation started uh, back in 2017, and it included a number of consultation events. Since then, we've met with residents, we've collected and considered in, in great detail of the feedback from residents, members of the community, and from colleagues within the council. And more recently, we've undertaken a detailed review of the previous options that we've presented. Uh, next slide, please. Today, um, we're presenting you with the previous options, which have been updated, and a new redevelopment option. Because we did not conclude the previous consultation, which we started back in 2017, we cannot take any of the previous options off the table. And we would appreciate that this results in a lot of information to take in. The documents that we've sent to you, these webinars and our offer of one-to-one -one meetings are designed to ensure that residents are fully able to participate and comment. This latest round of consultation will mean that the consultation exercise started in 2017 can be completed. It concludes with the council agreeing a preferred way forward early next year. But please let me reassure you, the council has not got a preferred way forward yet. All options are on the table and we want to hear from you before we determine the preferred way forward. Uh, next slide, please. 
So what's changed? Um, why have we updated uh, the options? Essentially, because lots of key contextual aspects have changed. And this includes changes to building regulations and changes to planning policies. But it also includes changes to council strategies, such as the new City for All plan, which is ambitious environmental targets. We've also taken into account social and economic changes, and in particular, the impact of COVID and what that means for demand for office accommodation and other commercial uses in particular. Next slide, please. So in order to decide what the best option is, we've drawn up key priorities for Huguenot House, and these are listed on the slide. I'm going to go through them because they are important. Quality homes that meet modern standards, and in particular space standards, and the ability to adapt homes in the future if required. Opportunity and employment. This is about long term opportunities, but we also seek to deliver employment and training opportunities right throughout the life of, of the project. Environmental sustainability. The Council's City for All prioritises tackling the climate emergency. And in corporate property, we are very actively working to reduce the carbon footprint of all of our buildings. Preserving and enhancing the local community. We have assessed whether each option is of benefit to the existing community, whether it enables people to continue to enjoy the local area and whether it enables future growth. And finally, financial viability. It is worth repeating that Huguenot House is a council investment property. The income that we receive enables the council to support frontline service delivery. So it is important that the options deliver value for money and are a good use of public money. As the team runs through each option, they will outline how each of the options performs against these key priorities. The assessment priorities reflect previous feedback from residents, and in particular, the aim to preserve and enhance the local community. This is a lot to take in. So we have posted more detail about this on the website and in the consultation booklet. But again, please contact us if you'd like us to phone you to go through these on a one-to-one -one basis. We want to hear from you. I'll now hand back to Kevin to talk through the first three options. Thank you. Okay, well, thanks very much, Claire. Um, well, this is the maintenance option. Uh, and this option refers to a 30-year maintenance plan uh, designed to keep the building up to standard. In the immediate term, this means repairing windows, the rendering and roof. We'd also replace one of the lifts and the water tank. Over a longer period of time, we would repair the facade. We'd also replace the windows, the heating, electrical and fire alarm system, as well as the second lift. This option would involve charging leaseholders for the work, which we estimate may come to charges of between 25 and 45,000 pounds. In addition, it doesn't address the underuse of the car park or the condition of the commercial parts of the building, which are not performing well at the moment. It also won't improve the environmental performance of the building, meaning it won't be substantially more energy efficient. However, it does mean that residents could stay in their homes during the works and is less disrupted when compared to other options. It also means the building would be improved for residents and would be brought in line with modern health and safety standards. Next slide, please. So this option is refurbishment. And refurbishment means doing everything I've just described for maintenance, but also making more significant improvements over the shorter period of time. Refurbishment would include replacement of both lifts, a new roof, new windows and facade, new heating and electrical systems, and improvement to shared spaces. Leaseholders would also be able to opt in and pay for new kitchens and bathrooms if they wanted to. A lot of the limitations of refurbishment are the same as maintenance, in that the performance of the commercial spaces is not addressed properly and the building would continue to be energy inefficient, although minor improvements could be achieved. 
That said, it would give us the opportunity to refurbish the offices to meet a more modern standard and the works would create some jobs in the area for the short term. It would see the building improve for existing residents who could return after moving out for a short period to allow for the works to take place. Next slide, please. So this is the sale of the building. Well, this is a straightforward option. We could sell the building. However, this is not in line with our usual practice as we try to retain and optimize all council assets. This is part of our commitment to achieving value for money for all our residents. We've also been advised that though this option is viable, in the sense that we might make some money from the sale, we are unlikely to attract a lot of buyers given the current market and the condition of the building. Most importantly though, we have no way of knowing what a potential buyer might do with the building, which means we cannot rely, uh, we cannot really assess the impact on residents or measure this option accurately against our key priorities. I'll now hand over to Darren to run through the remaining refreshed options. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, the next option is to convert the existing offices to homes. After we spoke with residents in 2017 and 18, we were asked to explore an option where we kept the residential part of Huguenot House as it is and converted the offices into new homes. When we refreshed the options this year, we noted that the current regulations meant that we would need to ensure that the entire building, including the residential part, was modernised and brought into line with these new building regulations. Therefore, this option now includes refurbishment. This, op this option delivers 10 new homes, half of which would be affordable. It would also see the building improved for existing re residents in the same way outlined by Kevin under the refurbishment option, with leaseholders charged for the maintenance part of these works in line with their leases. It should be noted that residents would need to move out due to the scope of the works, but could return to their own homes following completion of the works. These, uh, these building works would create jobs in the construction center, uh, sector, although the loss of office space would mean businesses located in the building would have to move. Keeping the building also limits the improvements that we can make to its energy efficiency. The next option, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. The, uh, the next option is to retain and extend the existing building. This is otherwise known as the 2004 podium scheme. This option was first proposed in 2004 as part of a planning application and at the request of residents in 2017, it was added to this consultation. This would see the building partially redeveloped with the podium and car park partially replaced to provide 14 new homes half of which would be affordable. Again, we would need to refurbish the whole building as part of the planning conditions for partial redevelopment and leaseholders would be charged for the maintenance part of the refurbishment in line with the terms of their leases. As a result, the current building would be improved for existing residents. Residents would need to move out temporarily during the works but would be able to return to their homes afterwards. Retaining the building limits what improvements can be made to its energy efficiency. Again, some construction jobs would be created by the building work. The next option is the redevelopment option as was presented in 2017 and 2018, also known as option 4A star. This option is very similar to when we presented it to you previously. It has been updated slightly to meet current policy changes. For example, half of the housing would be affordable. It would deliver around 50 homes, a cinema, 75 car parking spaces, and four shops. Out of all the options, this provides the most new homes. These would all be bigger than those currently in the building and would, would uh, provide private balconies. They would also be adaptable for residents with disabilities and meet all modern standards. We could also make significant improvements to the building's energy performance making a contribution to our goal to become carbon neutral. All existing residents would have to move out during redevelopment. And as part of this, 
resident leaseholders and secure tenants would, be, would both be supported to return to the new building if they wanted to. Although this option does not fully, un, uh, fully address the underuse of the car park, it does deliver a new cinema and shops, which would, which would bring economic, economic activity to the area. The construction, which would take around two years, would create a large number of jobs and apprenticeships. I'll now hand over to Miles, who will talk you through the new redevelopment option. Thanks, Darren. Uh, when the council began assessing the options and considering local feedback, they also undertook new market research. And this took account of the changing social and economic context since 2018. Based on those research, they asked us to design a new option which might be more appropriate for the area. The market research clearly indicated that demand was higher for hotel and leisure uses than it is for office and shops. It would also give us the opportunity to make better use of the space currently taken by um, car parking and to design a contemporary building that would meet modern environmental standards and respond to community and stakeholder feedback. Next slide, please. Um, so in this image is the new option. Uh, it will deliver 24 new homes, of which 50% will be affordable, a hotel, a cinema, and a casino. Whilst this option won't deliver as many homes as there are currently on site, the council will support, support secure tenants and resident leaseholders who want to return to a new home on site. All the new homes will be bigger. They will meet modern space standards. They'll have private external balconies and they'll be fully adaptable for residents with disabilities. Um, the commercial elements will meet best economic demands in the area and therefore bring job opportunities. And this is the only option which addresses the underuse of the basement car park. Uh, the building will target the very highest in, in environmental standards, significantly reducing its carbon footprint. And this will also mean cheaper energy bills for residents. Um, we've estimated that the construction program, which would take a, in the region of three years, um, would also generate jobs and apprenticeship opportunities for the local area. Uh, I'll now hand back to Kevin. Okay, thanks very much, Miles. Um, in terms of the next steps, um, the consultation um, actually runs now until uh, the 15th of January. Um, after that, we will review all the feedback received and take a decision to decide which option to proceed with. Um, you can expect to hear from us early next year with a decision and more information on what happens next. Uh, next slide, slide please. So this is the question and answer session um, and over the next 15 minutes or so uh, we'll now ask some of your questions to the project team. Uh, we've had questions come in uh, when speaking to people on the phone and email so we'll also add these. If we're unable to get to your question please do email us uh, at hugonohouse at westminster.gov.uk and we'll endeavour to reply. We will also collate all the questions together with the answers and put a frequently asked questions document on our website. So let's just have a look at the questions uh, that have come in and um, in actual fact there's quite a few questions for me uh, to begin with so um, that's that's quite fortuitous uh, it gives people a, a rest for a minute so um, the first one is um, why are you consulting now during Covid-19? Well um, as Claire outlined um, we started the consultation quite some time ago uh, back in 2017 and 18 and um, we were advised uh, that the consultation uh, needed to continue even though we were looking at a different option on the re redevelopment side. Um, it's been going on for a long time it's important that it is concluded and therefore um, we felt uh, because it's um, obviously an anxious time 
that we need to do that in uh, a, as quick a time frame as possible. And um, during this difficult time, COVID-19, we have given every opportunity for people to contact us in the ways that we've outlined um, uh, previously. So that, that was the reason um, for um, carrying on with the consultation uh, during uh, COVID. Um, in terms of the next questions, um, will we be able to meet with you in person? Well, we were very much hoping to do that. Um, and we have actually um, uh, looked at uh, the opportunity of meeting people at the Pop Hub. And um, we've done a risk assessment on uh, COVID-19 and put in uh, a considerable number of um, safety measures. Unfortunately, during this lockdown period, we were unable, and the advice was, the government advice was not to meet. Um, but as the lockdown is um, released, then we'll revise um, uh, our um, advice and um, in accordance with government guidelines. So we're awaiting those, as you know, um, shortly to be announced by the government. But um, we do want to meet in person safely, um, but uh, the safety of staff and residents is, is paramount. So um, we will keep in touch on, the, on that um, issue. So the next question is, which options require residents to move? And do you know uh, when they would have to do so? Well, of course, um, in terms of uh, moving, um, that would happen if there was major disruption. And so it's um, in terms of the options, the only option um, that wouldn't require moving uh, would be maintenance. Um, refurbishment um, would require the actual replacement of the facade. And it may be that moving out would be a short period, but the specification for that works has not been agreed yet. Any option that included redevelopment, um, then there would be a requirement to move. And again, the timescales and the programs haven't been decided, um, but we will keep in contact with you uh, and look at your own individual circumstances and try and support you as much as we possibly can. The next question is, um, can the council guarantee residents would be able to stay in the neighborhood if they have to move. What I can say is that we would make every effort to make sure that you could stay in the neighborhood. Um, but of course, we can't give a guarantee and we will work with you individually um, on that issue. The next question, um, is refurbishment different than maintenance? And how is refurbishment different than maintenance? Well, under the maintenance option, the common parts of the building would be upgraded, lifts would be replaced, and the building facade would be cleaned and refurbished. Um, in terms of refurbishment, um, we would look at replacing items, and it would be the main difference is we would be doing that work over a short time period, most likely about 18 months. Whereas you may remember that the maintenance period was over a long time, uh, which was a 30 year period, although obviously we would um, prioritize certain works, for example, the lift um, and the windows, um, you know, be before that period. Okay, next question. Um, the next question is how underused is the car park? And I'm going to ask Darren uh, if uh, he could answer that question. Thank you, Kevin. Um, we liaise with the car park uh, operator, Q Parks, and they've provided us with uh, um, their usage data. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the large parts of the car park are not commercially viable anymore and are, are mothballed. Um, I hope that answers the question. OK, thanks very much, Darren. The next question is uh, for Claire. And it is, um, why isn't the council prioritising homes for this site, given the desperate need for homes in London? Um, the, the building's a mixed use building at the moment. Um, we have to take into account a, a number of factors, including planning legislation. Um, we feel that we've got um, a, a balanced approach across all of the options. Um, we, we, as I said, we haven't got a preferred option. 
um, and all of the um, all, all all of the options have an have an element of residential. Um, but at the end of the day, this this is an investment property. Uh, it's not a housing project, um, no. and we felt feel that all, across all of the options, there's, there's a good balance. Okay, thanks, Claire. Um, if I can ask you just to stay on the line a minute, I think the next question um, is for you as well. Um, the question is, will local people have a say in the precise plans if you do develop on the site? Uh, absolutely. Um, this is a consultation exercise around the options, uh, which will lead the council to consider a, a preferred way forward. Uh, but there'll be further consultation and, and engagement, whatever the option is. Um, you know, this yeah. is a council building and we want to continue to engage with people, um, whatever option uh, we take forward. Yeah. OK, that's great. That's good to know. Thanks, Claire. Uh, the next question is uh, for Darren. And Darren, um, how would the council manage traffic coming to and from the site? Well, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, prior to construction, if 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 whatever works were to take place on site, uh, there would be a traffic management plan in place uh, as part of the construction management plan. Okay, thank you. Um, there's a a small follow-up question to that, Darren, and it's um, how would you manage noise, dust and other disruption if you did major works or development? So well, similar. I, but, uh, yes, it is, and I refer you to my previous uh, answer. So as part of the uh, construction management plan, if, if there were major works, uh, that would be agreed in advance of any works commencing. Okay, so that would be included in the plan as well. Great. Okay, um, and the final question, oh no, I think there's two more for you, uh, Darren. Um, are the existing offices not well used? So it's about the use of the offices. Thank um, you, yes. Uh, so the, uh, the existing offices are, are very old fashioned and they're, they're not up to modern standards. Uh, so where, whereas they, they are occupied, uh, they don't um, uh, fulfill their potential uh, in terms of uh, employment opportunities and economic activity. And uh, they, they certainly don't uh, fulfill their potential in terms of investment return uh, revenue for the council. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, the final question then, Darren, um, how will the options uh, to completely rebuild impact the environment? I think so as part of the uh, consideration of all the options for this consultation, we've carried out a detailed assessment uh, and that includes environmental assessment for all options. The, the details of those are available on our website for uh, uh, residents and other interested parties to view. Okay great, thanks Darren. Um, there's a couple of questions for me so I'll pick those up uh, now. Um, the question is how far would I be moved? Uh, what happens if this is too far for my school? Um, well, in terms of the moves, as I said, we would be um, as sensitive as an understanding uh, as possible, and uh, we would take into account those sorts of issues, uh, but indeed we couldn't give a guarantee. But I think um, if you have concerns about that, then I think that's a good opportunity for us to have um, a one-to-one -one session we can have um, that can be done over the web or on the telephone. So um, please, um, please contact us if you have those sorts of concerns and we can talk through your circumstances. Um, the next question is uh, how long would refurbishment take and how long would anyone need to move out? Um, well refurbishment um, will take uh, the estimate at the moment is about 18 months. Um, the, there wouldn't, you wouldn't be required to, to move out for all of the refurbishment but just some of it um, and mainly that would be where we're re replacing walls, etc., where you couldn't stay. And that would de depend on the, the method statements of uh, the builders themselves. So we would uh, need to talk to you closer to the time to be able to give you more an indication of, um, you know, the time that you may have to move out. Um, but we would, you know, we would be as um, accommodating as possible uh, and reduce that time as much as possible. Okay, um, the next question is, um, would leaseholders be compensated for any less uh, loss of rental income? Well, um, in terms of the compensation um, arrangements, those are laid out um, in the policies which are actually on the website. 
So um, please have a look at those um, and, and read through those. And if you've got any uh, questions in terms of your own circumstance, then please uh, come back to us. The next question is for Claire. Um, and the question is, can you tell us more about the market research? When did you do it? And did it take account of changes uh, COVID has created for central London? Yes, it, 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 absolutely. And, and that was the purpose of, of carrying out the research to, to understand the current situation uh, and the impact on the proposals uh, and the options. <laughs> rather. Um, so we, we, we carried that out in the, in the autumn time, so quite recently. Um, so it's up to date um, and it informs um, option seven in particular. Uh, but also it's, it's helped us have a, a general understanding, uh, which has been very useful of, of, of central London uh, and the market in particular. OK, great. Thanks, Claire. Uh, Darren, uh, a quick question for you. Um, will there be a planning consultation? Yes, Westminster, though it's a landowner here uh, and also the, uh, the planning authority is treated uh, as, as any other uh, party wishing to uh, redevelop a property would have to make a planning application as part of that carry out a planning consultation if one is required so that depends obviously on what option uh, is chosen as the preferred way forward. Okay thank you. Um, there's just another question which is related to redevelopment. Um, so why would you need residents to move uh, for the um, well, in actual fact, it says the two part redevelopment options. So in terms of the part redevelopment, why would moving be necessary? So this is for health and safety. So naturally the, the, the health and well-being of residents is uh, uh, utmost priority. And so due to the, the extent and scope of those works, and in order to ensure their, their, their safety, they would have to move out. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, there's a question here for uh, Claire. Um, and the question is, um, what support will the council offer local businesses? It's all very well doing big developments, but businesses are struggling and we need help. Yes, um, we, we know that the, the council has put um, together um, lots of help for businesses, for families, uh, for individuals over this last period of time, we're, we're acutely aware of the current uh, situation and how that's impacting on individuals and businesses. Um, if the people, businesses and individuals who are impacted at the current time, can I ask that we make individual contact with you? Um, because every business is, is individual, every business's needs are, are individual, every business's solutions um, are different. Uh, and bespoke. Um, so we would want to tail, tailor that support in a very precise way. So if you could provide your contact details, um, we'll enable some specialist and targeted support uh, wherever we can. Great, thanks Claire. Um, and uh, you could pop that, um, those contact details in the chat uh, if, yeah. if you like, and we'll, we'll pick that up. That'd be great. Um, yeah, there's a, another question for you. We're keeping you working here. Um, you're suggesting opening a hotel in your new option, uh, but there is one just next door. So um, why do you think another one is necessary so nearby? Um, well, the, the market research that we've undertaken um, flags up that there's still a lot of demand uh, for hotel space um, in, in central London. Um, yeah. the, the nature of, of the space uh, would obviously need consideration that the hotel uh, next door is is uh, a certain grade, uh, a certain uh, style. Uh, it's not necessarily the case that under this option that we would replicate that. Um, yeah. There's room for there's room for a, a variety of, of different offers and brands. Yeah. So, um, we're, we're pretty confident that uh, that that's, uh, that that re represents a viable option at uh, this stage. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's all for now, Claire. So um, <laughs> I'm over to Darren again now. So Darren, if I could bring you back. Um, Darren, when would work begin after a decision has been made? So um, Thank you, I guess it depends on the option, but uh, 
Well, you know, you're taking the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So it does depend which option is chosen as the preferred way forward. And then we'll continue to liaise with residents and other stakeholders uh, to uh, uh, to inform of, of, of the way forward to implement that, uh, that program. Okay, all right, thank you. And Claire, I uh, didn't give you much of a rest, I'm afraid. Um, uh, the question is, is there really demand for a casino here with the Hippodrome so close by? Um, yes, um, we, we believe so. And again, uh, the market research that we've carried out would, would demonstrate that there is. Great, okay, thank you, Claire. Um, Darren, um, this is a, a question around demolition uh, in such a built up environment. Um, uh, if that option and demolition was chosen, of course, um, would this be uh, would this be incredibly disruptive for businesses nearby? Of course, uh, city centre sites such as this uh, uh, can create disruption if they are redeveloped, and uh, the site next door has recently been redeveloped, and uh, that, yeah. that that has been managed successfully. Uh, again, as I referred to earlier, prior to any work for demolition, there would be a construction management plan put in place. Okay. That would include a demolition plan. Okay. Um, and a follow-up question, would this project include any improvements to the public space or public realm? So uh, it depends again on the, the chosen a preferred way forward, but if there were a redevelopment option, uh, then council policy requires that there are co contributions as part of the redevelopment towards uh, public works, uh, include, yeah, within the, including the public realm. So yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Claire, um, a few years ago, uh, the council was clear it wanted to develop here. Has that changed now, Claire? So um, the question is, a few years ago, uh, the council was clear it wanted to develop um, and has that changed? Um, we're, we're concluding the consultation exercise that started in 2017. Um, yeah. We don't have a preferred way forward. Um, we're consulting on the options, um, uh, continuing the consultation, uh, refresh the options, as I indicated uh, at, at the beginning of the webinar. Um, so, uh, and, and I think it's critically important to, to stress that we're in a, it's a different context. Um, and we've refreshed the options to, re to reflect the different context that, that we're in now. So um, we'll, that, that's the basis of, the, of, uh, of this consultation. Okay, thank you, Claire. Um, so one for Miles, you've had a long rest, Miles. Um, so uh, we'd like to bring you in now. Um, and the question is, um, would the build of any of these options be carbon neutral? Um, that, that would certainly be our target for the, for the redevelopment option. We would look at um, a, a sustainable way of trying to reuse material in demolition, and we would target, we would target a, a, a zero carbon building in use in the new option with things like BRIAM excellent for the offices and passive house standards for the res residential accommodation. Okay, thanks, Miles. Uh, There's a follow-up question. Um, uh, and it's been posed for you. It says, uh, would the council pay to carbon offset the demolition? Um, that may be a council decision, but is that, um, is that an option? Um, it, it's, it's, it's a possibility. It, it depends how, how, we, how we go about the process. It, it could be that, that we can, um, as I say, reuse some materials in, in the process of the demolition, but that's a, that's a decision for, for, for later on in the process. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Miles. Um, back to Claire. We're working you hard, Claire. Um, this building is in the heart of London. Um, has the council considered using it for a civic purpose? Um, uh, the, the, the short answer, I guess, is no, um, because what we've considered uh, are the options in, in front of in front of you today the, there are no other another option there are no other options that that, that we've considered um yeah. the these are they um and certainly the council does have um a variety of, of public 
buildings uh, within the, the, the near area and slightly further afield. I, I don't think we're particularly uh, short of uh, civic buildings, um, but no, what, what, what you see is, is what you get in terms of what we've considered. Yeah, okay, thank you, Claire. Um, and so a follow-up question is, um, the council must be struggling financially, uh, as all local authorities are. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you really have the funds for such an ambitious project? Um, the the, um, the well, uh, we don't know what the preferred way forward will, will be. Um, yeah, it's a good so point. The scale yeah. of, so the scale of the financial investment required has has yet to be determined, um, yeah. and clearly um, how the council funds that uh, and the mechanisms that we use uh, to deliver whatever the preferred way forward uh, is will will be considered. Um, but because we haven't dis decided what the preferred way forward is, it, it's it would be difficult at this stage to to um, quantify the scope and the mechanism, the funding mechanisms uh, uh, in, yeah. in that level of detail. I understand. Um, and I guess there's a similarity with the next question. Uh, it says, um, what would the money that this building brings in uh, for the council be used for? Um, so yes. um, as I yeah, but as I said before, this is a this is an investment property managed by the corporate property team. Um, and in line with all of the council's investment properties, the income that we receive supports frontline service delivery. Um, that's the that's the purpose of uh, of the investment portfolio. Yeah, that's very clear. Thank you, Claire. Um, the final question then, um, and I'm going to be giving that to Darren. Uh, so, Darren, if you could come back uh, for the final question, um, the honour is yours. Um, would the council consider pedestrianising the roads nearby? Thank you, Kevin. Um, pedestrianisation of the roads falls outside of the scope of the uh, consultation that we're carrying out at the moment. Uh, so I'm unable to comment on that. That's dealt with by way, by the highways team as part of their program for for, for, the, for the use of the, the, the roads in central London. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much, Darren. Um, and um, if I could have the next slide, please, uh, as that concludes the question and answer session. Thank you so much for all those questions. Uh, certainly kept the panel uh, on their toes. Um, so these, uh, this is the um, uh, second uh, session and thanks for attending uh, the second session, the webinar, and uh, a, a big thanks to the project team uh, for presenting and answering the questions uh, that you've posed. Um, if we couldn't get around to answering uh, your question, then please do email us, um, phone us, send us a letter and all the details are there and into your packs. Um, I really hope that you found the session informative and helpful and hope to speak to you uh, soon. Uh, thanks for taking the time to attend and uh, I hope you have a great evening. Thank you.